Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. James chapter 3. My brethren, Steve, be not many masters. Don't take on more than what you can handle. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. And the thought is here. The more you know, the more you do, the more you have, the more you'll be accountable. And the more the Bible you learn and read and study, well, the more you're going to have to be answered to God by what's in the Bible compared to somebody who doesn't read their Bible. Because they'll be judged too, but the more you know. More is not always better. I'm not talking about Bible reading. Is if a man has more children than someone else, well, he's got greater expenses in his family than someone else has. For in many things, we offend all. All offend. You will offend somebody with your mouth, your actions, whatever you do. Somewhere in your life, you will at least offend one person. If any man offend not in word, your mouth. The same as a perfect man. We know there's no perfect man. Now this stretches out. We've always said the word perfect in the Bible is you know, someone who's complete in the eyes of God. <coughs> Yet, even Jesus Christ with his mouth offended the Pharisees. Got him angry. And able also to bridle the whole body. Now, if you can not offend anybody, then you can put your body under control of lust and sin. It's impossible. Your body's going to fall away to its fleshly, fleshly desires. <coughs> Behold. We put bits in the horse's mouths that we may obey us, that they may obey us, the horse. And we churn about their whole body. So this little piece of thing that you put into a horse, we can control that mighty, that fierce animal. Now this is an example. We're going to read further. We also the ships, big ships. And this would be talking about sailing ships, which through, though they be so great, large ships, are driven of fierce winds, sailing ships, yet are they churned about with a very small helm, that's the little steering wheel on the ship, whithersoever the governor listed, that's the pilot. The pilot says, I want to go starboard. You turn that to starboard, the ship turns. Wait a minute, this thing's got great, great sails. And you turn it with a little helm, a little steering wheel. <coughs> Even so, so the tongue is a little member. That little bit in a horse's mouth, the little helm, it's a matter of control. We can control the horse with something little. We can control a ship with something little. That tongue is a little member 
And I didn't get information, but I'll leave it to you. To look, look up information about that tongue size. How much percentage of your body is it? Your head is bigger than your tongue. And boasted. That's not good. Great thing. Look how great I am. Look at all the things I do. Look, look how wonderful. Behold. How great a matter a little fire kindleth. That little goes back to the little in verse 5. The tongue is a little. The tongue is a fire. <clears throat> fire, James says. Watch. And the tongue is a fire. Psalm 39. A world of iniquity. That's interesting. So is the tongue among our members. Eyes, fingers, legs, knees, elbows, our trunk. Of our body parts, that tongue is a fire. Iniquity. It's not good. That it defileth the whole body. You know, you could be absolutely handsome or beautiful. You could be one of those people that found on, on, a, uh, on the front of a magazine. But if your mouth is filthy, cussing, rotten, I don't care what beauty you have. You're supposed to be vile just by your mouth. Follows the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. You know, we got Woodsy Owl for don't give a hoop, don't pollute. We got Smokey the Bear says that even you can prevent forest fires. Where is the spokesman for the tongue? How come we got something for pollution? We got something for forest fires. But yet, this filthy thing in my mouth, and in your mouth, even born-again Christians, we say things that offend people. We say, sometimes we cuss, slipped out, but it's said. Sometimes we treat people rude, crudely, mock, joke, make fun of, bully with. And watch this, and it's set on the fire of hell. Now, Jesus said, and Jeremiah said about the heart, that thing is wicked above all things, of sin. And then now we read that the fire of our body is not heartburn, but it's tongue burn. So when you look at somebody, you say, well, you got a sore throat. Why did they say that? Why on earth did that come out of their mouth? Because it came from their heart. It came from that little wicked thing that's in your mouth. It's there. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's 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 a lie. I guarantee, and I know it's all under the blood. When I went to school, listen, there were people that spoke against me, and I spoke against people. This little tongue, even little as a child, hurt people. There have been many times, probably as a child, I don't remember, but something I said hurt my mom. Maybe hurt my brother, my grandmother, my grandpa. My wife, my children. Somewhere this tongue is going to get you in trouble, it's going to get us all in trouble. And imagine, you speak hell, hell, hell. We, we preach that men don't go to hell. And yet James says that is the thing that is set of the fire of hell. And that man in the book of Luke, the rich man, he wants a little drop of water to put on his tongue. Why is he being tormented of his tongue, Luke recalls by Jesus Christ in his words? Because all the fire that tongue has done. Our tongues lie. Our tongues curse. Our tongues hurt. 
I mean other. It offends. There are many women out there who have been abused, and I'm not talking about fists or, or feet. They've been abused by the tongue of their husband or their children. It hurts. For every kind of beast and of birds and serpents, Notice birds and serpents are not beasts. So evolution's a lie. <laughs> One of those things of evolution, we come from birds somehow. And so the other day, they're coming out now, they're saying the Transaurus Rex, his great, great, great ancestor was a chicken. And some idiot drew a picture, it's just absolutely comical. So the Bible's right, and man's wrong. Of all things, the serpent's tame. All right, you go to a, whether you like it or not, you go to a circus. They got bears doing tricks. You got horses doing tricks all over the place. They're being used for police in New York. They're used for military. They're used for circuses. You got birds. They can be taught to sing. <coughs> World War II, they were taught to bring messages. A serpent, you can go to certain companies, that guy. He, he, you know, he's playing that little flute, nee, 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 and that thing comes out, you know, that's happened. But there's tricks behind that. We're not going to talk about that now. You can do that with a, you can teach your dog how to fetch a ball, how to sit, how to play, how to play dead, speak, go find his tree. You can do that. I don't know about a cat. I don't know anybody ever trained a cat, except for the litter box. But, but... Oh, and has been tamed of mankind. Man has tamed the animal. But the tongue can no man tame. Now, now listen, I'm a born again Christian. I'm a Bible Christian. I am holy than baloney. I can control my tongue. Uh uh. You know, as a man that preaches the gospel, a man that shouts out and uses his tongue, as a preacher does. He is going to get in much trouble because we flap our gums. We talk too much. You realize when a preacher preaches, he is, in a sense, defiling the Bible. Proverbs said, you know, if you keep your mouth quiet, it's good. <coughs> a preacher within time will open up his mouth and stick his foot in it. So will man. So will speakers. So will fools. The more you open that mouth, the more chance you have of getting your left or your right foot in it. But the tongue can no man train, tame. You will say something that will offend somebody. It is unruly evil. Now, do you believe that this Bible is written by the Holy Spirit? So the Holy Spirit is telling us what the tongue is. Full of deadly poison. Poison is supposed to kill the person that swallowed it. <laughs> now, if I drank arsenic, I'd die. But with the power of the tongue, I have ars arsenic properties for somebody else. If I have arsenic, it's not supposed to kill anybody else. And if I kill somebody with a poison out of my mouth, that defies nature. We got we got to watch. We got to put a watch on our mouth. The Bible says. All right. More examples. Therefore, we we there there with bless we God, even the Father. Oh Lord God, thank you, God. You're my Father in heaven, Lord God. You're just so wonderful, Lord. I praise you, PTL. Standing on the promises, count my many blessings at Calvary. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, is and that's all great. And therewith curse we men. You see that hat she wore? You see how those children act? Wow, you see that woman's wearing? Do you do you hear what their mouth is? Do you see what they're buying? You see how bratty that kid is? You see their house? But Lord, we love you. Ew, that person. And we all do it. We all do it. If you say you don't, 
Go to First John one one ten, and, and him that says he, he has no sin, he maketh God a liar. Let me let me, you stay here. Let me go quote that verse for you. I'm gonna show you something. Gonna, it says if we say that we have not sinned, we make him God a liar, and his word is not in it. All right, well, I got control of my tongue. What did James just tell us? What did God just tell us in the Holy Spirit? You can't. You cannot. So when you proclaim you got an innocent tongue with no sin, you make God a liar. I wouldn't want to be in that shoe. So, curse we men, which are made after the similitude of the man. We are made in God's nature. We are made in God's being. Body, Jesus Christ. Soul, that of God, eternal, forever. The breath, the Holy Spirit. We were made in the in the image of God by Adam. Then we made in Adam's image, which came from God. So we mock God by his creation. That ought not be so. Out of the same mouth. Proceed blessings and curses. That's the truth. It's on fire of hell. It's it's a little fire. No man can tame. Only the grave or the rapture can contain our tongue. Wouldn't it be funny when we go up in the clouds, we meet the, the brethren in the air. You're here? <laughs> I didn't even think you would be here. I know I don't know, but that would be the tongue working again. You'd be the last person I thought would be here. I don't know. Brethren, these things ought not so to be. We ought not be blessing God and cursing man. And we're not talking about thoughts. We're talking about words. Does a fountain, another illustration, does a fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter? No. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? No, it can't. You know how science is trying to ruin that today? They actually say, I haven't seen one yet, but they actually say that they got a tomato bush that makes potatoes and they got a plant that, I don't know, I haven't seen one. But the Bible says, can a fig tree my brethren bear olive berries. No, it's either an olive tree or it's a fig tree. Either a vine, figs. You walk up to a grapevine, do you get figs? No. Not by nature. So, no fountain both gives salt water and flesh. So the mouth is likened to a water fountain, even though the Bible says... It's a fire. <laughs> what an illustration. My tongue is a fire, but it's likened by James as water. Water puts out fire. But not in this case. Not in this case at all. There's no putting this thing out. Death or rapture. The mouth is lukewarm, according to Revelation 3. It's neither cold, nor is it hot. It's lukewarm. It walks down the middle of the road. Now, let's turn to Matthew 12, 22 real quick and see something here very interesting about the tongue. Matthew 12, 22. This is highly important. Matthew 12, 22. <coughs> Matthew 12, 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. He's unable to speak. This is not the problem. And he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spank and saw. This is not the problem. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, 
They said, here comes the problem, this fellow does not cast out devils but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil, calling Jesus Satan. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall he, how shall then his kingdom stand? If I by Beelzebub Satan cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, <coughs> then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else how can one enter in a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me. He that gathers not with me scatters the board. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. You take the Lord Jesus' name and cuss. You say GD. That can be forgiven. That can be put under the blood of Jesus Christ. Shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, run back to 28, shall not be forgiven unto a man. For whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither the world to come. Alright, this is the unpardonable sin. You do this sin, you will go to hell and burn forever. What is the blasphemy? They opened up their mouth against the Spirit of God and said, you're Satan working. That's the unpardonable sin. Which we can't do that today. Okay? We're not studying this right now. So, either make the tree good. Does that sound familiar? And its fruit good. Does that sound familiar what we just read? Else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. The tree is known by its fruit. Fig tree, olive tree. Old generation of vipers. Does that sound familiar? How can ye be evil... Speak good things. Doesn't that sound familiar? For out of the abundance of the heart, man speaketh. Why did you cuss? Why did you say that? What was the purpose? It came from your heart. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account therein the day of judgment. For by thy words, thy words, not the Bible, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You realize how much trouble you can get with your mouth? Saved or lost, there is going to be accounting for what you say. How you said it. What was your heart's intent? The motive. It's amazing how that matches Matthew chapter 12 back to James. I wish Christians and people would get that to realize one day. Whatever they said, idle word will be spoken before Jesus Christ. Verse 13. So we got done with the mouth. I'm guilty. So if you deal with somebody who's never sinned, lost, open up James chapter 3 and see if you can catch them with their mouth. Who is a wise man and endureth with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation. That, again, that's not talking. That's your attitude. That's your conduct. His work with meekness of wisdom. All right. So you got knowledge. Be meek. Be meek of wisdom of your words. We did faith and works. Alright? 
One of the works, meekness with wisdom. But, opposite of meekness and wisdom. But, if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, uh-oh, we've got a heart condition. Glory not. I am so mad I'm, I'm mad at that guy. Uh, vengeance is mine. I will repay him. Oh, you know, we're fighting. You know, me and the old lady are fighting. That's a sin. Glory not. And lie not against the truth. Don't boast and don't hide. You got a problem with me? Oh no, I don't have a problem. I do, but no, I don't have a problem with you. Are you causing trouble? Not me. That's a lie. If you are doing it, you're alibying yourself. Imagine the guy going before a judge for envy. That's exactly what the, that's exactly what the priest did for Jesus. Deliver him over to Pilate for envy. Imagine you got a conflict, you go before the priest. I swear to tell the whole truth, they don't do that no more, but so help me God. And then you lie. That's wrong. Alright, this wisdom, what wisdom? Envy, strife, and lying. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Envy, strife, and lying is never of God. But it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. Got it? For where envy and strife is, verse 15, 14, there is confusion and every evil work. We just got to finish with works in chapter 2. This is not the kind of work to have after you're saved. Envy and strife. All right, 17. But the wisdom that is from above, all right, here's God, is first pure, then peaceable, in this order, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruit, <coughs> without partiality. We saw that in chapter 2. Whether rich or poor. Without hypocrisy. Chapter 2 verses 1 through 7 we read. The wisdom of God is for all. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Envy does not cause peace. Go back and look at the lives of those Pharisees around Jesus. People were healed and they were angry. Sown in peace of them that make peace. So a fruit of a Christian after you save is to both be peace. Never envy. Never striving for strife. 